and welcome. Today I have got absolutely loads to do. Um, there's still loads of plants that I need to put into place. So let's get on and have a look at what I need to do. Currently I'm in the greenhouse. I've got these tomatoes that need to go into their final places and then they'll go on the floor down there and around here. I've also got a few large pots under there that I need to move first before I can drop the stage in and um, I can plant into them outside. Here I've got, I've got, I've got some butternut squash here. These are melons. Um, these need to really go into their final position soon, but I'm not ready for them yet, so they'll just have to stay there. At the back, I've got some trombone chino, and those are going to go on that compost heap there, as in they're going to grow on the compost heap. Um, and I'm going to see how well they grow this summer. Oh, I have to come out of the greenhouse. It's so warm in there. I have emptied my nettle feed into these bottles now and made fresh nettle feed. I did the comfrey in the last one. And um, now I need to do that. The, the, uh, I've just done the nettles. And then here are some squash plants that need to go into their final positions as well. So this Yuchiki Kuri is going to go into this big tub here. These are yellow courgettes. I've already got a courgette coming on there. These need to go in those big 30 litre pots that were in my greenhouse. So it all sort of dovetails nicely. This, um, this is my straw bale gardening, which um, I've done a couple of short vlogs about, um, uh, but I haven't released them yet. So I will do very soon. I've got this fennel in here is hardening off. That needs to go in a 30 litre pot as well. Sorry, I just cut you off because the wind started to blow a lot. This is a Crown Prince squash. That's gonna go into this bucket. And these are green courgettes. And they are gonna go into 30 litre pots as well. Okay, so I've mixed the old compost into the wheelbarrow with about, I don't know, a third of new compost, fresh compost. And then I've added some chicken manure pellets and some fish blood and bone um, because hopefully it'll slowly release over the coming season. So I'm just giving it all a good old mix together. And then I'll tip it into the bucket. So as this compost is absolutely bone dry, I'm going to give it a water. Um, I'm going to water it now thoroughly. I'm going to come back in about 10 minutes and water again, and then I'll plant into it. Um, whilst the water is settling in, I'll get on with doing the other pots and water them in then as well. It's always handy with pots to have these saucers on the bottom so that any water that comes out of the bottom um, stays in the saucer and the compost will soak that up over time as well. Okay, I'm going to plant these fennel, but truth be told, I'm not entirely sure they are bolted. But, oh, well, that's torn it. 
It probably will be bolted now. Next, I'm going to plant some more of my squashes. So this one is the Yuchikikuri squash, which I'm going to plant in this um, well, sort of like tub here. I've um, I've fertilised this with um, uh, chicken manure pellets and bloodfish and bone, and I'm going to. I'll cover it with straw like I did the other ones. Kind of wanted to go that way. That should be good. This doesn't look very strong, this one. I'm not sure if this one's going to make it, to be honest. If I pull it, it doesn't seem to have a very strong sort of root system there. So, not much I can do about that. And this one is a crown prince. And this one does seem very sturdy. I'm planting it slightly off centre, um, just, just to give it more of a run of the pot before it goes onto the fence, really. And this is a new experiment this year. I've, um, I'm going to grow on these compost heaps to try and make the most of my space. So um, this is full of um, horse manure, which is rotting down. It's been in here since about March, I think. So I dug a hole and I've put fresh compost, probably about six inches of fresh compost there. And then I'm going to plant this just on top, like that. Uh, I want it to be facing me because I want the courgettes to run sort of this way out. And then I'm just going to backfill slightly green courgettes. So I'm going to give all of these a good old watering in because it is warm today. Everything is really limp. Put that in there so I remember this green courgette. Hopefully we'll have some courgettes and I should be able to see by the colour but you never know, do you? So this will be very interesting to see how these grow on this compost heap. I'm quite excited actually. I'm doing a few little experiments this year, so this should be good. I'm going to cover them in straw as well. My next job is to plant out some of my cucumbers and gherkins. So I'll just move this sweet corn out of the way. I might also plant our sweet corn. So. These are my gherkins. These were going around the back. And then these are my market moor. And um, they are, well, they've actually grown quite a lot in the last few days. Um, but they, are, they were sort of the smallest. And they're going with the gherkins. And then in here, I've got four space saver. And then the two on the end are called Beth Alpha. So I've not grown those ones before. Um, so I'm going to get these four cucumbers here into this bed here. So I'm going to make a frame and I'm going to have cucumbers here and then butternut squash here on like an A-frame that they will climb up. I need to water this bed I'm going to move this, I think it's a sunflower, but I could be wrong, but it kind of does look like a sunflower. Oh, I don't know now, I'm looking at it, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm going to move that and find a new home for that, that, and then give this a thorough, thorough water, run in um, a, a bit of soaker hose for my irrigation system. It's not hooked up to the back yet, but 
I'll run the hose in now before I plant into it and then I'll um, I'll mulch it and I was also thinking I would put my sweet corn in there so I'm gonna get on and do that now well here it is all planted up I've got four space saver cucumbers in there and um, three butternut squash plants back there I've still got one more butternut squash plant to put somewhere and um, these are sweet corn I bought from the garden centre yesterday they are early bird and uh, my own uh, sweet corn is not growing very well at all the, um, the swift so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with them at the moment but um, these have gone in there anyway this bed is a bit chock-a-block but hopefully uh, they 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 they'll be all right i've um i'll put some chicken manure pellets in the planting pockets which will hopefully give them a boost for the next couple of weeks and then i'll um i'll feed with a, a comfrey feed that uh, that i made so um they've got a trellis to climb up hopefully the butternut squashes will go up and the cucumbers will go up and i mulched the squashes and cucumbers to try and keep as much of the moisture in. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I've had terrible um, trouble with cucumbers the last few years. They just, they find, they look like this when I put them out and then they just shrivel up and, and die. So hopefully this year we'll, um, we'll break that curse as it were. Um, but I do remember being told once never to mulch sweet corn. It doesn't like it. So I haven't mulched that, but if you have mulched sweet corn and um, it's been fine, then please let me know in the comments below. So my gherkins and cucumbers are going to go here. Gherkins here and cucumbers here. I need to clear out all these beds because these are all weeds. And um, well, this isn't a weed, this is garlic, obviously, but... Um, I might, I'll probably be taking the garlic out pretty soon anyway, but um, they'll be going in the back, the, the gherkins anyway, so they, they shouldn't uh, be affected by the garlic. But uh, yes, I need to give this a good old weed. That's a Swiss chard from last year, so that can go in my hopping compost tar. And um, I'll give this area a bit of a weed as well. all much tidier in this area now i have planted in my beth alpha cucumbers at the back and i've mulched them with straw and then i've got so i'm sure these are sunflowers i grew some dwarf sunflowers last year and um i'm, sh I'm sure that's what they are uh so I've left them there for the time being. I will transplant them somewhere else because I'll want to grow veg at the front of this bed. And similarly with this one too. Um, so the gherkins are in. I think they're um, they're all right. They've had a really good um, watering in and then the mulch is on top to try and stop the evaporation. And then I did harvest a few bits um, of garlic just from the back of this bed. Um, and there was one or two rogue ones in here um, so they are tiddlers but they're still perfectly usable so uh, that was a good small little harvest right let's go around the front and see what I need to do with my melons so I need to sort out this front greenhouse and put my melons and my indoor cucumber into place. I've got, these are tumbling toms, they are so much bigger than the ones I've put in my truck um, at the top of my driveway. I must have planted those other ones out too early. These, these mine have been in the greenhouse so they've thrived but they are going to have to be moved because they can't grow in here. They can go around to the back garden. So this is my Socrates um, cucumber. 
it's I well no it can't be all female because it's got a male name isn't it um but anyway it's meant to grow nice long cucumbers that are not bitter so that's gonna go in the middle there and then where are they at the back there are two watermelons they're gonna go in my other cold frame and then I've got these four Minnesota midget or oh, um, Minnesota melons from Bill and Bal so I've got four of them and they are gonna go in this greenhouse I've also got that's a squash uh, these are honeydew melons and they are gonna go in the cold frame that I made last year as well I need to find new homes for my not growing beans they just don't seem to be germinating the chilies are staying there and I need to find a new home for the beetroot and lettuce because I'll be dropping these shelves um, to get the melons to grow up okay this is all done now got the cucumber in the middle socrates does have little cucumbers coming on it but we've been in this position before and then it's sort of just rotted away over previous years and my melons are looking good but um in other years they've sort of looked like that as well and then not much has come of them but um hopefully this year something will uh will come of them i haven't um tied these into anything yet because I'm just debating what I'm going to do, whether I'm going to put some trellis netting in or whether I'm going to use canes or whether I'm going to do bamboo. Well, that's canes, isn't it? Um, I'm just not sure yet at the moment. So I'll have a think about that. And then I think I need to move these to my set of shelves because I think they're getting frazzled up here. It gets really hot up here. Um, so I don't think that's doing them any good and similarly I'm wondering if that's the problem with the germination on these beans but let me show you the other cold frame where I planted the other melons so this one is a watermelon and then there's three honeydew melons and then there's um another watermelon and in here i'm going to um grow the melons up and then across here i'm going to have uh, a trellis or some bamboo so it will grow that way on that side and this way on that side and then the melon should be in the middle and sort of dangle down this one is kind of a spare as it were if any of my other ones um go then i will use this one to replace it but um that's that's how the cold frame's looking at the moment i've got this bubble wrap because i want to make the cold frame a little bit warmer uh because last year it didn't ripen the peppers and i wondered if it wasn't warm enough in there so uh i'll go around to doing that at some point but uh, that's not urgent at the moment right oh what i need to do in here is to drop this top bit of stage and when i say drop it we've actually remove those slats the frame stays in place and um, i'll just put some pots along here i might use some big pots and grow two plants in one of those big containers and then one in those 10 litre ones because I haven't got that many 10 litre ones available at the moment because my um, tomato, uh, potato plants are still in them so basically I'm going to move everything out of here and then put these lovely tomatoes into place because they are desperate to get into their final positions right it is all done in here we won't linger in here very long because it's exceptionally warm 
but all the um, tomatoes are now in place we uh, we have had a bit of scorching here where that was against the top of my mini greenhouse around the front but that happened on another one I think that happened on these ones here and they've recovered so hopefully those ones will recover too uh, yes they're all in, all in loads of tomatoes there's just that pepper there that's like a snack pepper and then there's a pepper here as well the rest is tomatoes in here all in very different tubs um, to try and use the most of the space I have managed to find homes for everything but these pots here and these plants here need a home as well so I've got a stripy courgette here that's going to go in a 30 litre pot like the others then this one this one is a tromboncino which is a courgette that grows like a trombone essentially um, and then I've got a spare butternut squash another tromboncino and then this one is a mini butternut squash which I've tried growing the last three years <clears throat> and I've not really had very good results from it so all these are going to go on to my other composts at the back and I'll show you that now I also have some leek plants which I want to put in this space where I unearthed some potatoes the other day so uh, I'm just outside my fence and um, I did stealthily plant some oxide daisies here a few uh, not last year I think the year before because um, they were too big in my garden they um, they were just taking over everything and um, and I thought they'd all died but uh, they seem to be in full bloom now this is the compost heap again another stealthy compost heap um, which is outside of my fence boundary but no one seems to use this area so I thought let's reclaim it um, so I'm gonna grow on top of here with my um, tromboncino I think and, oh, and then I'm gonna grow on top of this compost heap as well um, this compost heap is already growing potatoes so I thought well we might as well try growing squash on here as well so I'll get on and plant those up and I'll show you what I've got at the end it'll be exactly the same as I did earlier which is why um, I'm not going to film it so here are the six leek plants I know it's quite hard to see them but I promise you there are six modules here they are multi-sown I think there's four leeks per module in most places maybe three in some uh, and they're probably about a foot apart in both directions so um, hopefully these will grow well I need to cover these to prevent us from getting leak miner but um, I'll use those cloches that I made recently once the um, uh, once the brassicas are finished there and when I harvest more of those potatoes, I shall plant more leeks. And here are my spare squash plants. Well, not spare, but uh, you know what I mean. I didn't use that compost heap around the corner in the end. I thought, oh, I'll leave the potatoes there and see how they grow. No, it wasn't that. What it was, I was talking to one of the mums at school this morning and she was having trouble with her courgettes. So I said I'd give her two of my courgettes. So she's having one of my tromboncino and this green stripy courgette, which has left me with one tromboncino, uh, one butter bush, one possibly Turks turban or butternut squash, and one butternut squash. Now this one, I'm not even sure if that's a melon to be honest. Um, but I guess we'll see if anything comes of it. So that is all my squashes planted up now. Woot woot!
And finally, on to the harvest for this week. Oh, but beforehand, I got my spoils bucket. Always really handy to have a bucket to put all your off casts in, and then you can chop it all up and sling in your compost. If you chop things down, they they rot in the compost quicker, so you're just helping the process along. Um, start off with the Lola, Ro Lola Rossa lettuce. Um, got a good bit, bit of that and then the peas these are the peas from uh, that pot I planted um, for the first early harvest that's all the peas from there now I'll be um, I'll be removing the peas from that pot and planting some spare cucumber plants there bit of rhubarb from the front garden broad beans uh, they are well, the broad beans are not doing very well. They've got a lot of black fly. I'll show you in the next one if I do a plot tour. Um, these are the broccoli. Um, there's two types of broccoli here. Those That is the Chinese kale, which is more like a broccoli. And this is that broccoli, the Cicillo, which um, I prefer this one to that one. This one, oh, sorry. This one is quite strong tasting. This one is more mellow. Uh, some onions, those are the ones I would grow in the spring onions, but now they're just fully fledged onions. Kohlrabi, the first pick of kohlrabi for this season. There's still a few to grow on, but i um, very pleased. Looking forward to trying that kohlrabi. I've got some radishes there and some kohlrabi leaves, which I'll, um, I'll use in a stir fry. Well, that's it from me for today. Thank you for watching. I am so pleased to have got my melons and cucumbers and tomatoes into their final growing positions. It feels a little bit like we're almost there, but there's still so much more to do. So um, please join me next time when we'll be doing some of those things. And um, or maybe I'll do a plot tour next time. So um, hopefully I'll catch you on the next one. All I can say about my jobs today is lovely job and take care, everybody.